Directed energy deposition, DED, is a metal additive process often applied on a machine very much like a CNC machine tool. That means it can use technology that aids CNC machining. I recently had a conversation about an example of this, simulation software. We have a part in our, in our booth today that has 11 million lines of G-code. Parts about 11 inches in diameter, about 12 inches tall, and it's a simulated rocket nozzle with a dual wall and a lot of structures inside of it. It's a very small part. Um, if you go to the rocket engine manufacturers, they're going to want to build a very large one of these. It could easily be 500 million lines of code, and then it becomes very dicey. How did you first recognize the value, the need for simulation? Um, we wrote a program. We didn't have uh, simulation software. We drove the nozzle into the part at the end of the program. So the programmer didn't notice that when he built the part, the very last line said, go back to Z0. And that's what it tried to do. Um, had we had Barricut, we wouldn't have lost twenty, thirty thousand dollars in hardware and Lord knows how many hours of time we lost. First describe what Vericut is uh, simply from the machine tool world. So Vericut is a CNC software that takes the G-code file that Tim was just talking about and using a digital twin of that machine it simply executes the code. So the machine kinematics were built in. CG Tech began adapting this for additive about how long ago? Oh, I would say 10, 15 years ago, we started off into the, uh, the white tape world and the uh, tape lane technologies. Uh, in many ways, this technology that we're talking about with uh, direct and energy deposition is similar. It's got similar patterns and profiles and cross-hatching and controlling directions and that. So uh, not that big of a step for us. We've been in it for a long time. Are there any particular challenges to realizing accurate simulation of a DED process? And when you're applying metal to a part and you're welding beads and laying tracks down, there are some differences and variances about how that material builds up, which is one of the biggest challenges a programmer has. As he's building the part, it's changing with every weld bead you're attaching to it. So keeping track of where everything is and the more complex the part, the more challenging that is. So as it builds, it'll build at different rates. There are different problems, problems completely unrelated to this attractive world. That needs to get incorporated into the simulation. In addition to using simulation to validate the tool path or the deposition path, you're also using it to validate the parameters of the process. Talk about that a little bit. Um, so in the additive world, the programmer's got a whole new slew of codes that are controlling these high-tech functions like the, the laser, the wattage, the material flow, the gas flow, uh, how, how much has gone uh, into the part. We call it a recipe of parameters. Recipe's good you'll get a good part and it'll build in a consistent way. Because you got a program running around expecting it to build at a certain rate. So if you don't build it fast enough, pretty soon you're getting farther and farther away from your workpiece and now material isn't sticking or it's thinning out and, and you have all kinds of problems with that. So we are checking those parameters in Vericut so you know if you're within the guidelines for that particular metal. And they could be different for different metals you're depositing as well. So we can let programmers store that as a library and it helps them keep track of their process.